going back to some of the violence in Gaza last week and the, the killings in Israel, uh, we were going to chat about how it was responded to by Muslims in the U.S. and about some of our lawmakers here, Barry. I am so sad to report in uh, every single major Democrat candidate for president of the United States, it's over 20 now, what did we hear? Crickets? Deafening silence. Mm -hmm. Not a word. Our closest strategic ally in the world was attacked brutally, viciously, and terroristically, and not one single candidate, not Biden, not Harris, not Sanders, not Beto, et cetera, said a word. And what's worse, your favorite Muslim candidates <laughs> attacked Israel. You mean, you mean are some of our, our Muslim lawmakers that have just been elected to Congress, like Elon Omar? Yeah. And then, uh, uh, what's her name, uh, Rashida, Rashida Tlaib. Yeah, I, I, pardon my sarcasm. It's, it's, you got to smile or you'll be crying. I know. Both of them released statements condemning Israel for the brutality of the occupation of Gaza. Omar talks about the occupation of Gaza as if she has no clue Israel withdrew in 2005 every single citizen that lived there in a hundred communities took all the businesses dug up the grave sites moved wow. everybody out and turned over the keys and what did the Palestinians do with the hundreds of greenhouses that were left to grow crops that could have been exported and could have been a billion dollar business. They burned them to the ground and then bulldozed over them. Barry, that's Every just 2005. Sorry to interrupt. That's just 2005. I don't think many people know that. They just hear the sob stories from the American press on a certain side and they, they just get some of these anti-Israel sentiments. But again, just in 2005, Israel tried to, to, to do some peacemaking. Literally, the withdrawal was incredibly difficult. It was done under Prime Minister Sharon, who was a great warrior for Israel, but felt he could make peace like he did with Egypt by giving up territory. And he created, I mean, obviously unintentionally, Amy, a hotbed of terror, the likes of which the modern world has never seen. And quite frankly, I think what's gonna have to happen, and this may happen after Eurovision ends in a week, mm -hmm. The next time there's a barrage of missiles, Israel's going to take the gloves off the IDF, and they should. Enough of blowing up empty buildings. Israel needs to go in there and take out the terror leaders of Islamic Jihad and Hamas. It will free the people from the brutality of their own regime. Literally, this is not a joke. I talked to an intelligence officer in Israel. Islamic Jihad and Hamas kills dozens and dozens of their own people weekly as an example of how to get in line or get in a grave. Anyone that speaks out that protests or has a disagreement with this terror ends up dead and their whole family sometimes disappears. That same general I talked to believes that the decision obviously hasn't been made yet, but the IDF is preparing to go into Gaza if the missiles start coming again. Islamic Jihad has put out a press release. They expect full-scale war by this summer, and they better be careful what they wish for. If that's what happens, it's over. The question is, how many people are going to be killed and how bad the destruction of Gaza will be? Because as a general rule, the missiles get launched from schools, private residences, uh, mosques, and churches, I'm sorry, in the churches, Muslim centers, right. knowing Israel won't blow them up. And Barry, what is next? Anyone's guess, but we should tune in to the americantruthproject.org and Barry Newsbaum because he's always got the latest. Barry, we cannot thank you enough for sharing all this with America Trends. We'll see you next time. God bless.